Hey guys, how you going? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a quick look at Fusion and why I use Fusion to create transitions rather than the edit tab in DaVinci Resolve. Now this one is gonna be a bit of a beginner look at how I created three different transitions for a recent shoot for a client of mine. Um, had a lot of fun with this, it was a product shoot, so I used Fusion to create a little bit more engagement, a little bit more of a dynamic, fluid motion through the scene and through the transitions rather than just your standard locked off tripod hard cuts which i find really boring so what we'll do guys is jump into this get started and then have a look you are going to notice a little bit of a costume change because truth be told i'm filming this intro sequence the day after um stage four lockdown in melbourne everything's a bit out of whack so forgive me for not being the most productive person in the world at the moment but appreciate you guys tuning in and let's jump into fusion and get started Baby, come right around. Tell me what you want, what you need. All right, guys, so here we are with DaVinci Resolve open, and we have three clips here from a recent shoot I did with a local company. We've got Turkish Delight and Mint Fudge Segway that we're going to use this knife scene, which is quite boring, which I'm hoping to spice up with Fusion, and these chalk almonds rolling off the desk into the bag drop of them onto the desk itself. The whole idea of this segment is just to show you guys why Fusion is so powerful for creating transitions and why it's so much better than the edit tab. And the main reason for that is the long and short is just control. You have so much more control over the transitions and what you can do to the clips. It is exactly the same if you're a Premiere Pro user who's thinking about drifting over to the DaVinci. It's the same as After Effects versus Premiere Pro. Yes, the edit tab in DaVinci Resolve is way more simple, way more easy to navigate, but it does have its limitations in terms of transitions. For me, I did this product shoot recently with the Red Hill Confectionery Company and I really loved it, but I found the locked off tripod shots that sort of lend themselves to product photography are a little bit stale. I shot 24 products in total. For me, when I got into the post-processing, I wanted these to make these engaging, I wanted to make these fun, I wanted to make these shots, these static locked off shots look a little bit different and a little bit more engaging to a viewer that might be stumbling across the video. Obviously that's great for the business and that's what they want as well. Rather than doing all my transitions in the edit tab, I use Fusion. The reason being is because it just gives you so much control and it is a much better tool. Yes, it does take more time. It's gonna add an extra layer of polish to your videos that you wouldn't have otherwise got if you're just using the edit tab. So what we're gonna do, jump into the Fusion tab here with these three clips. I'm gonna take you guys through some really simple really easy techniques to make your transitions a little bit better and add a little bit of flair and a little bit of spice to videos in post-processing. So let's get into it. First of all, what you wanna do when you're jumping into any sort of fusion composition is create the composition in the timeline. Uh, DaVinci Resolve can be a little bit unstable sometimes, so I find this really helps your computer and sort of stabilizing the footage and making it run a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna select these two clips here, right click, new fusion clip, and then I'm gonna hold my cursor over the two clips here, and then go into the Fusion tab. Now, whenever you open a composition in Fusion, you are always going to see MIDI in one and MIDI in two. For you to be able to tell which one of those two clips that you dragged into Fusion it is, all you gotta do is press the one or two key. So we press two there, which means it's gonna come up on this second screen. And I'm gonna know that's the fudge. So just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna go rename, or you can just press F2 and do fudge, which means this one should be our Turkish Delight. Uzi F2, rename that Turkish Delight. So this one guys, is gonna be a really, really simple uh, mask transition. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna click on my Turkish Delight just here. I'm gonna come up to my Polygon tool here. If you're looking for any tool and you can't find it in the bar across here, what you can do when you're in Fusion is press Shift Space. It's gonna bring up everything that you can use within Fusion to create awesome, awesome effects. So if you're finding, you can't find what you're looking for, just type it in so you can get a tracker, you know, Lumikia, whatever you want. So for me, I'm just using the Polygon tool, which is just up here. So I've got my Turkish Delight selected. I'm going to go right back to the start, add my Polygon tool in. I'm gonna grab this square, link it in to the Turkish Delight. First of all, what we need to do is come over to here. Now that's all checkered which means it's a full alpha channel, it's invisible, click invert. I'm gonna zoom right into this one, nice and easy. I'm gonna do a really rough mask. Now, obviously with anything, any sort of mask guys, the more time you take, the more polished it's looking, but I am going to do this really quick for the sake of the tutorial, bang, bang, bang. And now we have this mask. 
So as you can see, you've got this little grayed out area. For me, I just like to take the soft edge all the way up. For a small mask like this, you can get away with it, where it's just gonna blur out and basically make that not even a factor. So I'm gonna put that keyframe in, we're right at the start. And what I need to do, if we're looking at fudge, we're still on selected number two, which we can see on that white screen, is just see where that comes in. So that's about there. I'm gonna put another soft edge here and move across about five frames. Bang, and then I'm going to take that soft edge back down. What we should see is that soft edge fading away, which means the mask is coming back in. Now, you want, what you might notice is that this mask up here has moved. We can do a really basic rotoscope with this one. Uh, if we go back to here, we're going to go on the Turkish Light Shift Space, and then we're going to go Planar Tracker, add in, beautiful, and then I'm going to Use this to create a track. I'm gonna set the alpha key. Draw a little box around here to create our planar transform. And then I'm just gonna track forward. Should track through through all that. Yep, beautiful. And we can see when we come across here to the bit where it's faded in that the mask is sticking it to it. I do apologize for how rough it is. I'm just trying to go through this as quick as possible. Last thing I need to do guys is make sure if we go to media out, which is gonna be the final render that you're gonna see and press two, we can see that the mint is a little bit just in the background there. And the last little thing I wanna do is when it flashes in is do a sort of warp zoom transition through that gap and create a really dynamic transition to the next scene rather than just a hard cut. So what we're gonna do is go into our Turkish Delight. We're gonna grab the DVE tool this is basically like an advanced transform node, which means you can move in the Z plane as well and rotate and manipulate the image itself rather than you just traditional X, Y and rotation axis. So it's a very, very powerful and you do not have this in the edit tab, which is why I always like to do these transitions in Fusion rather than in the edit tab. So what we're gonna do, is gonna go DVE. Now I know when I go to the Z move, you can see how it sort of zooms it through. So to give really good, really, really good tool to give a zoom effect, two problems with it. First of all, we got the zoom, which is fine. We'll go forward about 10 frames. When does that end? Yeah, we'll do 10 frames, bang. But what you can see is that when we look at the center point, I'm not going through that middle. So all we gotta do is go back to where we were, create the keyframe, and then we can move this center point over just a little bit. So then as we zoom through, it looks like we're sort of zooming through and you can see there's a little bit of a curve, which I actually don't mind. But this one does sort of create a cool effect, but if you really want to change that, you can change that in the spline, which we'll get into. So just one little last little polish that I want to do for our Turkish delight is just add in a motion blur. I'm sorry, blur, we'll do a radial blur for this one actually. So as you can see, now we've got this blur here, that DVE, I'm just gonna take that right down, go back to where we start, smooth strength one, go yeah, forward about three frames and then we can do that. So what that is going to do is as we go zoom, it's gonna sort of create that warp through it and then you've got a little bit of a motion blur effect as you zoom through because it is a static shot, it looks a little bit weird when it's just coming at you. The little things make a huge difference with the polish. Now the last little thing to clean this up guys is what we're gonna go into is the spline tool. So we're gonna click up the top here. Now this is probably the most important bit of Fusion and the bit that really makes it so much more powerful over your edit tab. One, you can control how fast transitions have, can go. So one of the easiest things to do is just select all of them and just press Alt S and all of a sudden, you smooth out all your transitions. So that means when the zoom's happening, it's that little bit smoother for you. Bang, looks much better already. But it also means you can control it. So I know that I didn't really like the center displacement. So what we can do is turn off the Z move because I don't need to screw with that at all. And go to set and displacement. And I wanna make it so that it's a little bit, it doesn't swing out as much as the start. I'm gonna pull this little tab here all the way across and you can see it's coming straight through. So that was pretty much bang on for what we wanted. That center movement was accelerating a little bit quicker to make that sort of offset and give that swinging motion. Might be a look you wanna go for, but for me, I really didn't want that. So now it looks a little bit smoother. It looks like we're flying through. You probably adjust it a little bit more.
Beautiful, and that transition's done. So if we go back to the Edit tab, we can see that. Oop, just let it render. So this isn't the original thing I did. Originally, it took a lot longer. There's a little things you can do to polish it off. I'll leave it at the end, the original transitions. Actually, fuck it, we'll chuck it in now. And my edit took a lot longer, but it's not really practical for your tutorial, but same sort of effect here, just zooming through that. So next, guys, we've got this clip of the knife and coming across here to the Turkish Delights. Now, I just found this scene really boring, so I just want to add a little bit of flair. This one is really simple, guys, because you can use the simple transform node. You could do this one on the edit tab, but again, it's just good to get into the habit and learn fusion. It is very, 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 very powerful. So all I'm gonna do, guys, is find where the start of this clip is swiping across. I just found this scene, it was cool, but I just found it quite boring. So we've cut these down the middle. I'm gonna swipe across, and what I wanna do is do a twist and punch in sort of effect. So all I gotta do is find where I wanna start, bang, and I'm gonna keyframe in the size and the angle. So they're all done. Now we're gonna go all the way across, bang here, like that here. We're gonna take the size to two, so we're nice and punched in. Actually, that's too much, two. And then the angle, we can change that to 360. So we wanna do a full loop. Now, this is why we always use Fusion. So if this was in another tab, you would've had these black bits floating up around the outside. But what we can do when we're playing around with this, for one, I'm gonna add in some of that motion blur again. Let's go directional blur for this one. Directional blur and what we can do as he rotates, as we rotate around, I'm gonna jump in with a length and go up to, there you go, that's pretty good. So one, two, three, four, five, I think it's good. One, two, three, four, five. Keyframe it in again at the end. And once we've stopped, gonna change that to zero. So now what we can see is as we go through, all right, so obviously that looks really whack and not something that anybody would wanna use. And this is again, displaying guys why we use the spine tool because it is absolutely awesome. So in the spine tool, here we go. I just want to change up our, first of all, the angle could probably be a little bit more better. Now, obviously you got, if we click on these, you got the colors associated with what effect you're using. So if you just want to do, make sure you're only changing one effect, just untick everything else. So it's the only one that you see. Now what I want to do for this one is just grab it. And you can see it's very linear. So I'm going to grab this point. I'm going to drag it all the way down. See if it smooth things out a little bit. What you want, what you need. I know to say hi for you to find out. When you, when you're with me. So obviously this is back in the edit tab, but we're just again using those spline tools to really make sure that we are smoothing out the transition and making it a little bit more smooth, a little bit more sexy, a little bit more spicy. So last one guys, and I'll stop chewing your ear off. So what we're gonna do in this one is create these two clips here. There's two clips. It's the one clip of the almonds rolling into the, them dropping on the floor. So what I wanted to do with this one was basically almonds rolling. I'm gonna keyframe out with a mask the my ugly feet and then keep the almonds up here rolling through with a mask on top of that one to show, to sort of transition into this one make it nice and sexy. So I did this with the client. I'm just gonna show you how I'd go about this, guys, because this actually took me about two hours just to do this transition. Totally worth it, I loved it. I'll show you that piece now. So I'm not gonna take you through all of that, guys, just because it could take absolutely forever for me to go through, but I'll show you the basic principle of what I did. And if you guys want a more in-depth editing process for this transition and other transitions I do for clients, let me know and I can maybe break down every single transition because they do take a while. They are useful tools to know, but I know I'm probably aware this is probably a pretty lengthy video already. So first things first, identifying which clip is which. That is the almond, I'm gonna call that almond drop. And then that means that one is the bag drop. 
So the first things first, guys, I'm just gonna use a rectangle, which is basically just another word for a square mask in DaVinci Resolve. Um, what we need to do is invert that. I'm gonna go right back to the start. So what I wanna do, because I'm gonna be masking out the bottom of this scene, is make this nice and wide, nice and long. And what I wanna do is come to the scene, the clip, bang right there. That one, just before a, that table comes up, a little bit of a softer edge just to make it not so obvious. Bang, and then we're just gonna move through here keyframe it in. Sometimes it's just easy to use the Y key, keyframing it all in. It's so and the real power of Fusion comes from being able to do multiple layers and multiple masks. So what I can do is connect an Eclipse tool to this rectangle. And as you can see, it's revealing what's in the rectangle. So what I can do is zoom right in here, zoom right in, bang, 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 and just go right around these almonds. Now, bear in mind guys, I'm doing a very, very rough edit right now, just for the sake of time. But now what I can do, as you can see, we've got the mask here for where the almond is falling off the table. And I can keyframe this in and follow him along. I'm just gonna take that soft edge down all the way along. Now, I'm, again guys, doing this really rough. If I really wanted to do this really well, I would be keyframing all this and going through all of it. You can see why I'm not doing this in the tutorial because I actually, in the original edit, as you saw, I did this with, I think, five or six elements. So it does take a long time. It's not a complicated process. It's just the simple things done really well and make the big difference. So then we go bang. Still trying to track this little almond. It's difficult with the way I shot it with this camera, but again, so, so worth it. Okay, cool. Looking in the media out over in this tab here, as we follow along, excuse me for the poor masking effort. I'm just trying to do this nice and quick. You see almonds dropping through that almond there. And what I was gonna do is mask this one, this one, this one, and this one. But I'm not gonna drag you guys through it. So that is pretty much it, guys. Again, I'll show you the original with that one because that one was a really complicated masking, but that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this didn't drag on too long. I just really wanted to show off the power of Fusion, how much it can help make really dynamic situations out of rather mundane scenes. For me, shooting product photography, it's not something I really do. We're in stage four lockdown here in Melbourne, so it's a little bit harder for me to get out and about and shoot with you know the usual sort of clientele. And I do a lot of cafes, a lot of lifestyle sort of stuff. So this isn't something I'm used to, but I found the evolution of walking through, like I found the progression through Fusion and the amount of control it gave me was really awesome and actually made the editing process a lot more challenging, but also a hell of a lot of fun. So hope you guys get out there. I hope you guys get to your shooting wherever you are in the world. And I really hope you're having a good time. Keep smashing Fusion. Let us know if you're using Premiere Pro, After Effects, DaVinci Resolve, what you're thinking, how you came across the video. I'd love to connect with you guys. And if you have gotten this far, I would absolutely love it if you could subscribe. Thank you so much. See you in the next one.